I want to come to this <laughs> crucial issue in a minute, but Ben, on, on um, Lord Howe's point... Yes, well, all three consumer. questions, I think, were about the culture of democracy, yeah. about with the climate of anti-politics, if you like. Um, when I talked about education, I wasn't talking about people being less educated. I think people are more educated, but there's, there's a... There's a sad paradox that as people seem to be more educated, um, public life becomes more trivial. Um, I was, it, was, I, it was a very sad thing. I went to a, a girl, very good girls' independent school and I spoke to 180 very edu- well educated, obviously going to be very successful um, A level students, and um, only 20 were studying history, and many more wanted to. Um, but um, they were forced to pay politics with, with their A-levels um, so that they could do grades that they ought to do. It's not just history, it's languages as well, things that, that don't have a kind of immediately utilitarian purpose but teach people how to think, how to engage, how to give them a vision beyond um, subjects which will um, you know, give them a kind of a vocational kind of education. Um, well, I find that quite sad. I find it sad that um, although there were more forums to discuss things, there, there's, there's less of a, of, a, of a democratic culture. There's more of this kind of anti-politics thing going on. And um, when I was at university, which wasn't a huge amount of time ago, um, people with you know, highly educated, very motivated, very sort of public spirited people they think twice about going into politics or going into the civil service or going into uh, teaching. But most people want to, want to make money. So people are treated like consumers. They're treated like consumers by politicians, and they have been for quite a long time. Um, and they're managed by politicians, treated like people sort of competing on a marketplace. And it pushes, and it's pushed people away from participating in, in politics because it's part of this idea of negative liberty, I suppose, is that people who participate in politics from the, the, the new right through the 50s, 60s, 70s, the people that participated in politics were, were nuisances and that they could lead to extremism if, if they got too involved. There's an absolute connection between those two things, between the people who are arguing for economic liberty and individualism and p- diverting people away from engagement to politis- politics. I think the connection is very, very strong. Um, and when you start people, treating people like consumers in that way, they, they'll act like that and they won't, they won't want to get involved. Uh, and they won't see it as being a rational choice. So, you know, we're in this chicken and egg situation again. We know, we're, you know, people pulling away from politics because, you know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a rational thing to do. Um, I don't know. How do you get people back, back from the expert? How do you get people who are at university to get, get re-engaged in politics? Can I, um, can I just ask if... Do you think if they thought they could start up their own parties, at least get some MPs in, that would help? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's a funny thing in this country, you'd think there would be more independent countries because people like, you know, we've got a history of independence being elected to, to Parliament throughout history and they've always been very popular when they've got there. They've been popular when they've been truculent and independent. Um, yeah, if, if, the, if, if, uh, if there were sort of more characters in Parliament, the people who were, who were a, a higher calibre of MP, uh, people who were worth supporting if there were heroes in politics, Maybe I had a conversation with an American during the primary campaign between uh, Clinton and Obama, and he said, and I was very cynical, as I think most British people speaking to American about politics would be, and he looked at me, this guy was in his 60s, looked at me in amazement and said, is there anyone in politics in Britain who you can have any kind of hope with? And I, I, was, I was silent, I couldn't think of anyone. So why, if you're a young person, why? You know, what, you know when, I, when I was at university, uh, there was one protest that unified the whole university, and that was because the rent was going up, college rooms. <laughs> and this march stopped outside King's Chapel because there was a rehearsal on. <laughs> and they, 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 the chanting of, you know, save our parents' bank balance would interrupt the chapel, the choir. Um, but it was, ter- it was a terrible place to be, you know, you know at university when I, you know, when I was there. I, I have to say, I didn't wasn't, think... There wasn't any kind of forum for, for, you know, people's ambition was, you know, if I want my liberty, if I want my freedom, I can do it by making money, I can do it on the market, I can do it by my lifestyles and choice like that. You know, it's hardly surprising. I've, I've never been a, a member of any party because you know, I'm too much of a dissident. Uh, my libertarian streak runs quite deeply, but um, 
Uh, you must um, join one. I, well, maybe I you will. must join one. You, you can't give me preach. hope. Give me hope. You can't preach. No, no you have to hold your noise, nose and join one. Also, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> maybe I will. But um, but I mean, maybe I'm guilty of this as well. Trying to sort of you know, stand outside politics and try and do things by writing books that you know hopefully people will read, or writing journalism that you hope people will read. Uh, because you know, my voice would be diluted in, in a political party. But that's party. all very important as well. I, did, I didn't think, I, when I said to my husband I was, I was uh, chairing this meeting, he said, are you all going to talk about Obama and what lessons we could learn? It's been one hour, 20 minutes since the first mention of Obama. <laughs> so he was I wrong. Apologize. I mean, I, do you mind if I just ask a question of our panellists? Um, which is the sort of question that I, I came in wanting an answer to and still don't. And I just launched it with the Roundtree Trust have asked me to launch a campaign called Power 2010, which is all about trying to get people... Um, between now and the election to engage in the issues of democratic renewal and actually try and intervene in the general election across the parties. And it's proving, actually, interestingly, using some of the techniques that Obama used, incredibly popular so far. But I, the question I have for our panellists, which is, has been quite a doom-laden, you know, we're all doomed sort of conversation in what, lots of ways, is... You know, the Turkey's voting for Christmas scenario is always faced at reformers, which is the people you want to change are the people who've got to make the decision over change happening. You know, the whole country could be in support of PR, but unless you can somehow persuade those few people in uh, Parliament to uh, vote the right way or put the right timetable in Parliament, uh, you know, put it on a bill somewhere, you know, change doesn't happen, and they're the people who've got, in a way, most to lose. So I, I would like, from our panellists, and we'll just go this way, and you can use it also to sweep up um, some of the conversations that we've been having, you know, how do we go from where we are now all the nuances of the, the, and the debates that we put in aside for a minute of people's differences in opinion, but how do we actually get to a position where change of some fundamental nature to our democracy can actually take place? Yeah. You uh, have a few minutes. I'm actually, I'm actually a huge optimist. Um, I came into the House of Commons, I went through this terrible few months of thinking, my goodness, um, it's just me, no one else quite realises how dreadful it is. And then I discovered that... Um, the Telegraph had got hold of a couple of DVDs and I thought from that moment, I'm not, I'm not alone. People are going to realise that this place stinks.